Welcome to the Sun Belt Men's Basketball Championship as part of Camp Week presented by SoFi. We're in Pensacola, Florida for the Sun Belt title game between the Appalachian State Mountaineers and the Panthers of Georgia State. Appalachian State is the outlier, the underdog, playing in its first ever Sun Belt Conference championship game tonight. Meanwhile, Georgia State is the favorite and the two-time defending champion of this event. Of course, last year's was cut short by COVID. How we got here? A couple of semifinal games played last night in Pensacola. And both of them had some interest. Georgia State able to hold off Louisiana and then... App State needed overtime to eliminate and pull another upset, taking out Coastal Carolina. And welcome, everybody, with former Providence head coach Tim Welsh. I'm Doug Sherman. Glad you could join us here tonight. And, Tim, you know as well as anybody in these one-bid leagues, you play your entire season for this game, and you're trying to make a little bit of program history. Well, it's a great feeling to get to this point, but when you wake up as a coach or a player on Monday morning of Championship Monday, you've got a stomach that's turning because you've got this far and you just want to get over the edge and both these teams are playing very very well Georgia State with eight wins in a row and Rob Lanier's got this team cooking they really can score 81 points a game and for App State just overtime overtime the last two nights on threes and fouling on a three so they've got to feel like maybe a little bit of luck and momentum is on their side as well well one of the guys who can get it up and put it in the bucket for Georgia State is Mr. Rallin, who has a tremendous shot. Corey has been stroking it this week in Pensacola. Well, Corey Allen is a pure scorer. The transfer from Detroit has learned how to win at Georgia State. Rob Lanier said he has made us a winner, and he's learning how to win, and he is one of the reasons they're winning. They space the court with their three-guard offense, and they are really tough to guard. And for App State, over this weekend, throughout the weekend, it's been Michael Amanasi because he has been on fire. He puts the ball on the deck. He comes off screens ready to lock and load a very good defender and has really worked his way into the lineup the new yorker all the way to app state they get things done from brentwood long island to boone north carolina and tonight in pensacola florida and we are underway with the 2021 Sun Belt championship game app state with the basketball first Georgia State is the higher seed wearing the home white uniforms, and you referenced it, Tim, for this Mountaineers team. This is their fourth game in four days, the last two nights going into overtime. Georgia State's only had to play two games to get here. Do you anticipate that endurance and their legs is going to play a part in the outcome here tonight? Absolutely, but, but, big but, momentum. Momentum can carry. Now that you're at this point, when you look at it at the beginning of the tournament, you think that it might be overwhelming to try to win four games in four days. But now to this point, it's like, listen, we've gone through everything this season that we've gone through. Let's just go play on emotion. Justin Forrest, the senior guard to lead the way. Almonese, as we've talked about, has been knocking down shots. He's coming off a 19-point performance in the win over Coastal, and he's got the first two tonight for App State. A confident score for App State. There's the answer inside. Ellie Sisime from Congo has the first two points for the Panthers. Well, you'll be saying that name a lot tonight, Doug. Learn how to pronounce it because he is a relentless rebounder and he tacks every missed shot. Yeah, he is the team alpha dog. He is the hardest worker on the court. He's the hardest worker off the court, in the weight room, and he really sets a physical tone for Georgia State. Three seconds to shoot. Now Monacy, no. Offensive rebound for the Mountaineers by Donovan Gregory. And we've got a traveling violation to give it back to Georgia State. One thing you cannot do, you cannot pass the ball to yourself. But both teams showing strong man-to-man -man early. But they will flip and play a little zone depending on the pace of the game. But Georgia State really wants to get up and down the floor. They average 81 points a game. They're going to space it. They've got the two bigs. They play a little high-low game, a little pick-and-roll game. But then they play those three electric guards out on the perimeter. And the other part of the equation for Georgia State, like you say, they are top 20 in the country in points per game, but they also take care of the basketball, top 20 nationally in assist turnover ratio. Well, not only do they take care of it, but they are very effective in their passing. They really give it up, they share it. 
Long three by Adrian Delph misfires. Justin Roberts keeps his dribble, tries to bring it back out front, and will reload with 20 on the shot clock. Good job by Roberts, keeping his head up, pounding in the floor, spacing it, reorganizing. Jalen Thomas, his first shot is off the mark. Rips the rebound away from Forrest, and it turns into three points on the reload. Kane Williams is a pure scorer. Early in the year, he was a little hungry for his points, but learned how to play within the system and now has become a more effective all-around player. Delph gets the whistle, doesn't get the roll. Kane Williams is a lockdown shooter. Look at the perfect stroke. After the missed shot, the best thing to do is pitch it back outside before the defense can recover. That time, no contest on the perimeter. That means Williams is lights out. Well, in this weird season, Tim, this is the fourth time these two teams have met. Rob Lanier's Georgia State Panthers lost twice in Boone to App State, but they were just coming off of a COVID pause. And then in the return game to Atlanta, the Panthers beat App State, but App State was without one of its key players because of COVID. So do we make anything out of the regular season series, or can there be something gleaned from those three games? You know, I never make anything out of the regular season series when you get to the championship because uh, all bets are off. These kids are just dying to win. They're going to play so hard. They're going to leave it all on the floor. It really is going to come down to who makes shots from the perimeter and who handles the basketball well and runs good half-court offense. Mountaineers with the basketball down by two early. Nice spin into the lane, absorb the contact, and Justin Forrest has his first two points. Well, Doug Sherman, that's what you call a power guard. Forrest kind of plays like a power forward at that point or two-guard position. Just lowered his body, spin moved in the lane, took the hit, and finish. I'm sure his father, the former forward at Georgia Tech, first team all ACC, James Forrest, would appreciate the physicality there. Justin Roberts, no, and the rebound saved for App State. What a great game in college basketball. Georgia Tech, James Forrest was, was an unbelievably great player in the ACC. Clean spot up. Delph has the triple. It's a good spot up and good ball movement early by App State. Spacing the court, driving and kicking on the weak side before Georgia State could recover. And at this point, App State is playing... Again, without James Lewis Jr., their 6'8 junior uh, forward, because of an ankle injury, he's been in and out of the lineup the last couple of weeks. So R.J. Duhart, 6'9 sophomore, got the start again. Banged in. Banged in either way. It looked like it looked like it hit, it hit his arm as well. State flying early. Nine unanswered points for the underdogs from Boone, North Carolina. We've got a held ball and will take us to our first media timeout. Well, this, Doug Sherman, is why you throw out all the records on Championship Monday. Funky things can happen. Off the window. Maybe a foul, too. <laughs> ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by SoFi. Get your money right. Georgia State on the short end right now, but this Panthers program has been a bear in the Sun Belt Conference. As you see, since 13-14, they're nearly 100 wins, the most in league play. They are currently riding an eight-game winning streak, and Rob Lanier has taken the reins from Ron Hunter and just continued to build on the success that this program has known in recent years. Well, Rob's a proven winner. There's no doubt about it. Has head coaching experience at Siena, but Rick Barnes at both Texas and Tennessee and very well thought of in the game. He had a four-year run as head coach at Siena back in the early 2000s, including a trip in 2002 to the NCAA tournament where he picked up a win over Alcorn State before losing to Gary Williams and the Maryland Terrapins and would go on to win the national championship. Forrest, no. About the only thing that hasn't gone right for App State at that end so far here tonight. The one thing about App State is defensively, they play the pack line defense, very similar to what Virginia plays. 
and they are very, very efficient with their defense. They don't gamble, but they get about eight steals a game without gambling. They don't trap, and one thing they don't do is they rarely foul. Their opponents are only getting the free throw line shot nine and a half. Their opponents only get to the free throw line about nine and a half per game made. Donovan Gregory hands it off. And here's R.J. Duhart getting the start again tonight. He played 40 minutes last night in that win in the semifinals over Coastal. Seven to shoot. Gregory in some trouble. Almonese barely grazed the iron. Comes Kane Williams quickly up ahead and finds the open man Evan Johnson for the easy layup and that snaps the 9-0 App State run. Well, that's what Rob Lanier told us earlier this morning. Goes pace is so important. We don't want to play the game in the 60s. We want to get play the game in the 80s. That's how you got to get out and get easy buckets. Well, they average over 81 points per game and remember Georgia State opened its season with a quadruple overtime victory at Georgia Tech where they set the program record for points in a game. And here they come. Five unanswered points after the three-point bucket made by Ryan Boyce. That's way too easy. And that's on Dustin Kearns' like defense because he's pretty upset over there on the sideline. No one picked up. Boyce came down as the trailer was wide open. Find the open man in the corner. Delp, 4-3. Good ball movement by App State on that possession. They really spaced the floor, found the open man on the weak side. Three from straight on. No problem for Ryan Boyce. The Memphis transfer has six quick points off the bench for the Panthers. Well, Dustin Kearns is going to tell his team that Boyce only averages four a game, but you better get out on him. He's got a pretty good looking stroke on the perimeter. Ryan Boyce started 10 games this season early, had a season-high 12 points, but he's been playing a much lesser role in recent weeks, but still valuable and dangerous off that bench. Five to shoot. Gregory, tough shot. Good defense by Georgia State. Very good. Built up wall in the middle, great contest, great lockout. Corner three is good. Rattled in by Johnson, the freshman from Durham. And you see the way Rob Lanier lets his players play pretty freely. They come down, they space the court, they move it around, and then they attack in the half court. It's now an 11-3 run for Georgia State, answering the 9-0 run for App State. Kickball. And that'll take us to our next media timeout with the surging Panthers back in front. Now moving the ball, space in the court, playing with pace, head up, kick ahead. That's why the average night conference should be outstanding. Nine o'clock on ESPN, Gonzaga continues its pursuit of perfection. Tim Welsh will the Zags wind up running the table and becoming the first men's team since Indiana way back in 76 to go undefeated. Uh, I'm going to go on the fence because I'm just hoping for a baylor Gonzaga final. I mean, watching Baylor play this weekend, they're back. But uh, Gonzaga certainly is has all the weapons. And you know what they are, Doug? They're a much more physical team than people give them credit for. But everybody talks about their ability to score in 91 game, 91 plus. But they're a very physical team, and they're hard to guard in the transition and the half court. Well, that should be fun. Tonight, 9 o'clock on ESPN, the start of the West Coast Conference semifinal. It's now a 14-3 run for Georgia State. Well, Georgia State just comes out of transition, and they're thinking one thing, score quickly, but in, in an organized fashion. That time, we didn't get up and guard Williams. You must make him put the ball in the deck with his right hand. The senior from Douglasville, Georgia making his second triple of the night. Nine minutes in in Pensacola, Florida. 
And again, a long possession leading to a long jump shot. Georgia State quickly coming back the other way. Ohio State's got to look, try to pound the ball inside a little bit more, try to drive it into the gut of the defense and then kick out to try to get an open three. Johnson. Fabian Brown lost it out of bounds, but the Panthers were the last to touch, and so the Mountaineers will keep it. That's a good look at the freshman from Sacramento. He played at Sheldon High School, where he was a teammate of Arizona State standout freshman Marcus Bagley, who, of course, is Marvin's younger brother. Well, say will run an opportunity, and they can rebound the ball. They've got the quickness to get out and run because they have been struggled against this Georgia State defense in the half court. Pocket pit, then did lose it. Kane Williams comes up with it. Williams tries to get the foul call, throws it up on the rim, but it's just a missed three-point shot. Well, that's not a good look by Williams out on the perimeter. He's had a good night so far, but he's got to keep the ball moving from the top if George if App State gets up into his face. Just past the midpoint of the first half. Tim Welsh on Doug Sherman from Pensacola, Florida, Georgia State. Up five in this title game in the Sun Belt. Justin Forrest. And a foul call. That's just the second foul of the game so far. Second on Georgia State. Rob Lanier did not like that call, and I agree with him. It looks like Forrest initiated the contact. He just shoves his way through the door, and Roberts picks up the foul and the pain. So the first on Roberts, the other foul has been called on Thomas, and you see him grabbing at the bridge of his nose. You're right, Tim. You got Forrest at 195, and Roberts takes the pain to the Face, the whack, and gets the foul. And for the Panthers, like that. He's very good. He's very crafty as a guard. He's got good footwork around the basket where he just kind of finds an angle and he spins in and draws the contact. Lane violation. And it looks like it's James Lewis Jr. who has come into the game. So uh, in spite of that ankle injury. Dustin Kearns is using his big man, but a little too aggressive or anxious stepping in, I guess. Well, that's the last thing you want. You've got a guy who's almost 80% from the line. You should not be trying to barrel in and violate. His points are too valuable. Good defense by the Mountaineers. And they come up with a steal. Justin Forrest. Lays it in, and he's going to go back to the free throw line on the foul committed by Sosime. Well, this is App State defense at its best, the pack line. If you dribble the ball into the gut of the defense, you have to expect that second and even third defender, and they never got themselves into a flow, and App State taking advantage with the big foul. Forrest. Well, he was a first-team all-Sun Belt player a year ago when he averaged 17 points per game. The Sun Belt has decided this year, Tim, not to have voted already on their all-conference teams and player of the year. That is being done this week in Pensacola, and they're not going to announce those awards until Thursday. The idea is in this strange year, with the league being split into two divisions, the East and the West, and neither side seeing the other until this week at the tournament, that they were going to let everybody see everyone else in the league in person before making their votes. But I would think that Forrest is certainly going to be in the mix to wind up somewhere on an all-conference team. And is relentless on the glass. So Sime, he is just a beast. He goes up every shot. Rob Lanier says his nose is on the basketball. Forrest lost it. Taya, ball belongs to the Mountaineers. Look at him, just misses the shot and then just goes, finds his own rebound and just 
the ability in traffic to make plays. And Rob Lanier couldn't have been more glowing of his praise. He just said, everybody gets their energy from Sosime. We also had a chance to uh, chat with Rob Lanier's top assistant, Cliff Warren, this afternoon as well. And uh, he said of Sosime, he's multi multilingual. And so it's Cliff's job. He's learning a new word in French every week so he can better communicate with Sosime. And you, you want to know what the word is this week, Tim? I don't know if you know French at all. I know. Relentless. That's what I would say. <laughs> but he is on the glass. I mean, he is a coach's dream. Everybody wants to have a guy like Eliel Sosime. I just like saying it. Yeah, they call him Ellie. And uh, the word apparently from... Coach Warren is V. It means go fast, go, go, fast, fast. And I, I, I don't speak French. I never took any French, but uh, apparently that is. I mean, you know, coaches have to do an awful lot of different things to, to connect with their players. And, and this young man who brings so much energy doesn't need to be told in any language to go faster because he's always going fast. Well, he plays along Jalen Thomas up front. And we've got 6'9", six, 6'10". Six, and not a lot of teams play with two bigs anymore, but... Rob says that Jalen Thomas has picked up more energy as far as rebounding, defense, and just playing so hard because of his front court mate, Susimi. Michael Almonese spent last year at Division II Southern New Hampshire after his two years at Division I Stony Brook. Turnaround misfired by Duhart. Williams gets it back from 16, misses the elbow jumper. Here come the Mountaineers. That was good offense, though. A little dribble handoff play at the top. Good hustle by the second Mountaineer to get the layup. Brown has his first two. Rap State now finding their own pace in transition and on defense. A run out. Almonese lays it in, and just like that, it's a two-point ball game. Uh, starting with their defense, their activity with their hands. They play with a lot of hands out in the passing lanes. Off the bounce, they're going to give that help and really attack the, the dribbler as he gets into the lane. Foul on the shot. Count the bucket. And a chance for three for Justin Roberts. Great footwork by Roberts. First time in a few possessions that Georgia State took their time. They got into the gap. They didn't rush things. And... And one. But UNCG has weapons. Back to you, Doug and Tim. All right, thank you, Jordan. With Tim Welsh, I'm Doug Sherman. Pensacola, Florida, the site of the Sun Belt Championship, where these guys will be punching a ticket, either Georgia State, the favorite, or App State, you see the number four seed. That means they were the four seed in their division. Georgia State won the West Division. App State finished fourth in the East Division. And so far, Tim, we've had a game of runs. Currently, Georgia State is on a run to reclaim the lead. Georgia State, a little uncharacteristic, Doug, in the last few possessions, last three or four minutes, turning the ball over, kind of putting their head down and dribbling into traffic. They're better suited when they space the floor, dribble drive, and then kick quickly kick it to the other side of the floor to the open shooter well some of the numbers are encouraging right now for the panthers five of nine shooting from distance they are controlling the board 16 to 9 over app state app state flying for the fourth time in four days adrian delk gets to the rim and lays it in cuts it back to a three-point game between him and justin forrest adrian delk they're two power guards for dustin kearns that can really get to the hole they create space and then they find an angle and go State has four of its five starters averaging double figures. The other one who we have not mentioned quite so much tonight is Donovan Gregory, sophomore from Charlotte, who had an incredible stat line in their semifinal win last night over Coastal Carolina. Had only four points, but Gregory had 14 rebounds and eight steals. Steal the seal of the game as Coastal was racing up the floor to send it to an over another overtime, but just really good turn the corner find a way, not force the issue, wait for the defense to make a little bit of a mistake, and then they 
Got all the way to the rack, and there's a good looking player, Donovan Gregory, a freshman. Two to one assist to turnover ratio. Kind of a power point guard who plays the power forward spot. Mountaineers back within a point. Under six minutes remaining in the half. Ryan Boyce has come back onto the floor for Georgia State. This is Boyce getting the ball back and laying it in, and he'll have the chance for old fat three-point play. Well, this is what Georgia State does. This is why they're in this game tonight. They're a very unselfish and a skilled passing team here with the head up, finding an angle, and you see Roberts with that perfect old-school bounce pass delivery down low to Boyce. Like it. Well, Ryan Boyce spent four years playing for Penny Hardaway. Once at East, uh, one year, senior year at East High School in Memphis. And then was with him for his first two years of college. Actually left midseason last year to find a new destination. He also was on Team Penny, the AAU program. And uh, so he played with Wiseman and Lomax and all of those guys for years. But uh, he has charted a new path going to Atlanta to play now for Georgia State. And he's got nine important points off the bench tonight. Both teams have kind of settled into this basketball game, kind of playing their own style right now, trying to impose their will. Here you see Gregory trying to make some things happen at the top. Five to shoot. The three by Almonese is good. Almonese took his time, and that was a very good defensive set by Georgia State, but better offense by App State, being patient, space in the court. Little dribble drive at the top. After turning the corner, Johnson connects. Well, App State, much better job the last three or four possessions of being patient, changing sides of the floor, not rushing, not dribbling into traffic. Georgia State get the ball and go. There is no hesitation as Evan Johnson brings it up. Kane Williams on the pick and roll has his pass knocked away, stolen away by App State. It's a rare turnover for Kane Williams. Georgia State again, most of the perimeter players, excellent passes. Once again, getting to the rim, this time though, unable to finish. Out of bounds. Thomas couldn't gather that pass, but he's fortunate to keep as Duhart was the last to touch. And Doug, when you do a deep dive into these teams, some of these teams that you haven't seen a lot on television during the season, and you start breaking them down, the first thing you look for if the team's efficient is their ability to pass and their assist-to-turnover ratio. And first thing that jumped out to us is when we looked at Georgia State, six out of their nine players that are in their rotation have a positive assist-to-turnover ratio. That's why they average 81 a game. And on their 11 made field goals so far tonight, they've got eight assists. Another good indication that they are in. Screen comes from Boyce. Here's Allen, who we featured off the top. He has had a slow start offensively, but he picks up the assist on the short corner jump shot by Boyce. That's what you have to do. You have to be ready to make that next pass, and then your offensive teammates got to slide into an open area because the help's going to come with the pack line defense. You're going to see that second defender. So your teammate's got to slide into an open area. He's got to make himself available. On the takeaway, it's going to be an easy two for the Panthers. Justin Roberts, the junior from Indianapolis, makes it 34-27 Georgia State. Well, everyone talks about Georgia State's offense. But their defense is very underrated. They really get after you with quickness, and tonight they're bothering App State in the half court with active hands. Here is El Monacy, who we said came out of Brentwood High School on Long Island in New York. Do you know whose record for all-time points he broke, Tim? You're giving me a lot of tough questions tonight, Doug Sherman. Asking, <laughs> it's asking only the me, first half. You're asking me French, you're asking me uh, <laughs> long time struggle state. You'll tease that let, one, Doug Sherman. Tease it. Yes, I, Tim Welsh, I'll let you think about it and use that thing they call Google on your phone. If not, I'll tell you what it is. Georgia State, 
flying behind Justin Roberts. Hey, how about the fact that we have fans back in buildings? I mean, it's not capacity. They can't do that. But in Florida, they are allowing a limited number of fans. And so, you know, it's mostly family members and close friends who are in there. But uh, we had an afternoon game, the women's championship, which was won by Troy today. Congratulations to the Trojans. And it was nice to have some atmosphere. And we've got the same thing tonight. Fans have made the trip from Atlanta to root for Georgia State. And those who've come from Boone, North Carolina to root for App State. I got to tell you, though, Doug, every time I hear John Crispin's voice in the month of March, I get a little shaky because uh, uh -oh. he, sent, he sent us home one night oh. in the NCAA tournament, Penn State over Providence. But uh, I won't hold that against him. He's too good a broadcaster. You sure it wasn't his brother? <laughs> <laughs> it was both of them. <laughs> what a one-two combo they were at Penn State. Monacy is fouled on his drive to the bucket. It'll go against Corey Allen. And Sean made a good comment back in the studio, Sean Farm, because, you know, Georgia State really kind of played uneven there for a period of time in the middle of this first half. They seem to have settled in. And you've got to be very protective of the basketball and running your offense in the half court. And there's, it's a fine line because Georgia State wants to run and they want to get it up and play with pace. And Rob Lanier said that was the first thing he said to us today. We want to make sure we play with our pace. But if we have to play in a half-court game, we've got to get organized because their defense is very, very good. All right, 11 points now for Almonese. Have you figured out who he passed? All-time Brentwood basketball. Great program for many, many years. Who used to be the all-time lead scorer before that man. I was going to say Derek Rowland, Mr. Albany Patroon, but you've got another name, I'm sure. Uh, Mitch Kupchak. <laughs> oh, Mitch, of course. Yeah, played for so the Mitch played, played, played for the great Stan Kellner back in the day. Just unbelievable teams coming out of Brentwood. Just great, great talent. Of course, uh, Mitch went on to be a great player at North Carolina and have a long NBA career both as a player and now still in Charlotte as an administrator. Whoa. Couple block shots. Held ball, possession arrow remains at this end of the floor. Well, this is one of those plays that Rob Lanier will show his team at halftime or if they win tonight. This is what we need moving forward because they just stayed with the play. They got out in transition. You saw Brown had a good angle to the rim, but tremendous fight on the backside, chasing the ball down for Georgia State. There's Almonese at the bottom of that pile. I did want to say Mitch Kupchak on the night his record was broken, that high school record, he made a point to call Almonese to congratulate him and offer him words of encouragement. Pretty cool stuff. Well, what a tremendous player Mitch Kupchak was and now is just a great general manager for years in the NBA. Building the Hornets back into a playoff contender. Here comes Almonese. And he is fouled. And we'll head back to the line on the personal that goes against Kane Williams. So you can see, he plays with that little fearlessness that they have in the playgrounds of Brentwood. And I have to look it up after Doug. I'm not sure. I'd say he's probably the first player from Brentwood ever to go to App State. <laughs> That's probably a pretty good guess. He played a couple of years at Stony Brook. He was recruited out of high school by Steve Peichel. Of course, now the. Uh, Head coach at Rutgers, who's about to have the Scarlet Knights back in the big dance for the first time in 30 years. But uh, after two years at Stony Brook, he decided to transfer down to Southern New Hampshire, although that's a very good Division II program, where last year he averaged 16 points per game. And he's really picked up right where he left off, and he is a guy who can put up points in a hurry. And for a team like App State, and he's already well into double figures, he can keep you in a ball game. Well, Dustin Kern's done a really good job at App State. And this team, we watch watched them on film, and we watched a lot of them. We watched the games over the weekend and some of the previous games. They are pretty organized on both ends of the floor. They never get out of their game plan, and it starts with defense. That is a three-point bucket, a big shot for Jalen Thomas coming off. Well, the last time these teams met, he put 22 on the Mountaineers put 22 on him, but that is his first 
first three of the season. So you can see why they maybe didn't go out and contest him because the scouting report is a very good mid-range shooter, but that's not his range. But tonight, anything's going down. Well, you got to get a hand in that man's face. Almonese is heating up and has the Mountaineers back to within two. 30-second timeout. Back right after this. Got himself a good one there from uh, Long Island, New York. And there is Coach Kearns. He had a successful two-year run as the head coach at Presbyterian of the Big South Conference. And you know how, Tim, he can evaluate talent? He uh, had Adam Flagler come to Presbyterian, and now Flagler is one of the key players averaging nearly double figures coming off the bench for the second-ranked team in the country at Baylor. No doubt about it. it. Starts at this end of the floor. They play great defense without fouling. They just a good position that pack line. They're active. They move on the pass and they give a lot of help. But then they recover and contest. Tough contested three comes up short. Delft with the rebound. App State has a chance to go into the locker room either tied or with the lead. A high ball screen for Almasi at the top. Tough fade away. No. And the dunk will not count. And so Georgia State holds on to a two point lead 37 35. We've got a good one. 20 minutes in the books. Our score at the half 37 35, Georgia State. Now let's send you to the studio. Welcome back to the Sunbelt Men's Basketball Championship as part of Champ Week presented by SoFi. At the Pensacola Bay Center, we have reached the start of the second half in this championship game of the Sunbelt Conference, and we have ourselves a ball game. And welcome back, everybody, with Tim Welsh. I'm Doug Sherman. Each side took their turns, Tim, having runs, and... App State has showed, in spite of being an underdog, they are very much up to the task here tonight. Well, they are, and I, there, there's a reason these two teams are in this game tonight, because they're both playing very well. They're built to last. App State with their defense, Georgia State playing on both ends of the floor, a fast pace, but also very good defense in their own right. And listen, with App State tonight, it's been their defense early, and then Georgia State kind of got sloppy with the basketball, but got themselves back in the game, started running better offense than App State came back in the second part of the first half because they pushed the ball up the floor and they were dynamic at the guard spot. And it was Michael Almonese who was most dynamic leading App State in the scoring column. Well, from Brentwood, New York, all the way to App State, how did you find your way there? Well, this is why they wanted him there, because he could do this. He could knock down shots, and tonight he has come ready to play, playing built with confidence that has been building this weekend in Pensacola, averaging over 18 a game in the tournament in the last three games. And listen, Georgia State has got to just continue to stay in the course, limit their turnovers against this stingy App State defense. In the history of these two programs, Georgia State has been to the NCAA tournament five times. Appalachian State has only been there twice and not since 2000. So one of these two teams in 19 minutes and 47 seconds, barring overtime, is going to be cutting down the nets and heading to Indiana on a charter flight to get ready for the big dance. Got our first free throws of the second half on this first possession. Ellie Sosime makes the first and makes it a three-point lead. Well, I think Georgia State's got to get Sosime and Jalen Thomas a little bit more involved in the offense. And they've got to move better. They go, they play a little high-low game, but also get out, pick and roll on the wing, and then look for each other inside. A little pressure in the backcourt off of the made free throw by Kane Williams. Handled by the Mountaineers, and now they can attack, and they get an open three off of it, but can't cash in. And we've got a foul on the rebound. And it goes against R.J. Duhart, the 6'9 sophomore from Boynton Beach, back in the starting lineup here in the second half. Impressive on the, on the putback. Not much there. Go, 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 
Once again, Justin Roberts, the DePaul transfer out of Pike High School in Indianapolis at the point for the Panthers. Thomas way off the mark, and that's well within his range. His game has expanded where he can make a runner, those elbow jumpers, turnarounds. He can back you down. He can shoot from the baseline, but uh, you wouldn't know it from that last try. Rob Lear said he's got, he has an improved motor, and that is his spot, but App State was right in his grill with the contest. Now that coaching staff at Georgia State thinks that he has the potential down the road to be an all-conference type of play. I'm honestly denied the shot block by Sosime. The big fella just relentless, whether it's on the glass or the rim protection. He averages about 1.4 blocks per game. He's looking for another one here. Deflects that pass and now defends in the corner. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Adrian Delph again turns the corner and with that left hand able to lay it in. Delph is just a pure scorer and he did that in the first half as well. Just keeps his head up, just keeps the dribble until he finds a little bit of an opening at the rim. Yeah, he was a 2,000 point scorer at Kings Mountain High School in Gastonia, North Carolina. So like you said, Tim, he knows how to score. Honestly pulls it back out to Delph, and again in the lane, misses the runner this time. Good job by App State, though, probing, finding a way. Here comes Georgia State, though, in transition. Kane Williams with a nice look ahead to Jalen Thomas, who was fouled by Justin Forrest, who was given up an awful lot of size in there, about eight inches shorter. And so he surrendered the foul. Jalen Thomas is being guarded by Donovan Gregory. He's only 6'5", but Gregory plays bigger than his side. He's doing a size. He's doing a good job of denying him that little spot right off the side of the elbow where Jalen Thomas likes to set up and make that jumper. There's Donovan Gregory still looking for his first point tonight. A holding foul before the inbounds pass. This was tightening things up early here in the second half of a little touch fouls. First foul on Almonte. <laughs> and just the fourth, or already the fourth, I should say, for the Mountaineers this half. Again, we talked about it earlier, they do not put their opponents on the free throw line. Push on, push on. Corey Allen, he's still looking for his buck, first bucket of the night. Georgia State will keep it. And again, that's a little bit of problematic for Rob Lanier. He's got to try to get Corey Allen some open looks, but App State is right up in his face. And Allen averages over 15 points per game. Here they get him another good look. Just off the mark. Chance to tie or take the lead for App State. He's got that deep range. That was a pretty good look for Allen. He's a 43% shooter from out there. Forrest, way off the mark. Well, at the start of the second half, we have not seen the shot making that we saw throughout much of the first half, at least so far. Well, I think both coaches talked to their clubs at halftime about just tightening things up, getting back in transition, making sure you get five in the paint and then get out to the three-point line and especially run Georgia State off the line. They're going to space the floor with the three guards, and they're doing, App State's doing a good job of contesting so far in the second half. Allen, Roberts, and Williams. Rob Lanier's Panthers from Georgia State riding an eight-game winning streak. They're 16-5 and five overall on the year, but they've been held scoreless now for nearly three minutes. And that drought continues. Can the Mountaineers make them pay at the other end? For the lead, yes, the big fella, R.J. Duhart, shooting only 19% on the year, buries it for a 40-39 to 39 lead. We've got the two big guys making threes tonight. Thomas on one end making his first, and then Duhart, low percentage to high percentage. Now Justin Roberts just inside the three-point line, puts Georgia State back in front, give him seven points.
Nice to hear some fans in the building chanting defense for Georgia State. And in this weird year, we understand there are no formal or organized watch parties either back in Boone, North Carolina or in Atlanta, Georgia. But we know folks are watching, hoping that their school, their team, is the one at the end of the night cutting down the net. Is it Forrest? Is it Almonacy? Is it Donovan Gregory? No! It's the big fella, R.J. Duhart. I can stroke it, too. You believe we see the Duke Blue Devils as a 10 seed playing in a first-round game on Tuesday afternoon? Well, you can because of, of the uneven season they've had, and certainly down the stretch they played better uh, the other night, notwithstanding against North Carolina. But, you know, who would be surprised if they were playing Thursday against Florida State. I mean, you know, they, they've been known to have their backs against the wall and find a way. Coach K, I'm sure, will uh, make sure they're ready to play in Greensboro. Well, the fun tips off tomorrow afternoon on the ACC Network. Second round coverage on Wednesday also on the ACC Network. And then beyond that, the quarterfinal semis and championship game will be on ESPN and ESPN2. We see... Joey Brackett says Big Ten's going to have nine teams in, and then the ACC with seven, Big 12 with seven as well. But uh, those two sevens are not necessarily equal, if you know what I mean, Tim. Well, here's what I see from the games I've watched in the last couple weeks. Two teams coming on late that are not in the field, according to Joe, but are close are St. John's, who I think is playing good enough to be in the NCAA tournament, and Syracuse, with two good wins last week over North Carolina and Clemson, starting to play well as well. well you just became a much better friend in my eyes when you talk up my orange like that. That's a, that's a wonderful thing, Tim. I oh, know you, you went there. I didn't know you went there, Doug. That's right. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Look at my screen. You can see where I'm sitting with all the stuff behind me. <laughs> Let's take a look at that last play. Now, drive the ball inside, and then they do a great job of rotating offensively to ball side. They, time Georgia State digging in way too much on the post. They've got to stay home on the outside, especially on Almonacy. Well, his eyes light up when he sees Georgia State on the other side of the court. His career high 24 came at Georgia State in Atlanta, February 23rd. He's got 19 to lead all scores so far tonight. But he picks up the foul there, trying to go for the steal. Well, good energy, there's King Williams back in the game, and Georgia State needs to get him going on the offensive end. When he gets going, Allen and Roberts kind of feed off him on the perimeter, but now physical defense and a little too much from App State. We were talking about Joe Lenardi in his brackets, and of course he's got Georgia State in right now as the automatic qualifier, and he says the Panthers would be a 14 seed. Steal by Donovan Gregory, like he had eight of them last night in the semis. Foul on the rebound. Now if the Mountaineers wind up pulling the upset here tonight, they would not be a 14 seed. They would much more likely be a 15 or even a 16 seed. But right now it's Georgia State who is slotted in there for the time being. Of course, App State had lost six of seven coming in to the Sun Belt Conference Tournament. But they have rattled off three wins in three days, including the last two nights in overtime. And it does make you wonder as we get further in this game, Tim, will we see signs of fatigue for Appalachian State? I don't see it so far. Their defense has still been special. That time attacking the offensive glass. And R.J. Duhart giving Dustin Kern some really good minutes at that five spot tonight. He's been active. He made the three, but attacking the offensive glass as well. Did you have examples when you were head coach at Iona or at Providence where you had teams that you anticipated maybe some fatigue where they're playing multiple games and multiple nights and they fought through it with adrenaline and just the passion to want to get that win? Oh, absolutely. You know, you do it whether it's in the NCAA tournament or your or your league tournament or even some of the early season tournaments where you're playing three nights in a row. That's why a lot of teams like to play in those, the Maui Classics, the, the Bahamas tournament, any of those preseason type deals where you have to play three straight days. And it really can prepare you mentally for this time of year. 
think there might be some other reasons they want to go to Maui or to the Bahamas. This year they were in Asheville. And that was a really good tournament in its own right. Texas, Alabama. And in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. That's where the uh, battle for Atlantis got moved this year. It's been a crazy season right from opening tip-off on November 25th. And again, that opening night was actually in Sioux Falls. And I remember the one game outside of our event that jumped at me was this Georgia State squad went to Georgia Tech and beat the Yellow Jackets in four overtimes. And in that game at the time, you thought, well... Maybe not that big of a deal, but the reality is Georgia Tech's really, really good and going to get into the NCAA tournament, and that win now, three months on, looks even better for Georgia State's resume. Well, it certainly does. And Rob Lanier, we talked about it. He's done a very good pro pro a very good job with this program, and we want to discuss. And so we'll let them do that. Take a break from Pensacola. When the Associated Press released its latest top 25 earlier today, Baylor moved back up to number two in the country after Michigan fell to fourth. No question about where the Bears stand at the moment atop the Big 12 standings. The Phillips 66 Big 12 championship gets underway Wednesday with a couple of first-round games. And uh, your reward, if you're TCU or Kansas State for winning that game, is how you get the Baylor Bears. Have fun well, with that. No there's no reward in this league, and as you can see, and we've seen it all season long. Oklahoma's kind of tailed off a little bit down the stretch, but I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, they're playing in the second weekend in the NCAA tournament, but what a league. And we'll see if Kate Cunningham comes back to play in the rematch against West Virginia. And he was named the Big 12 Conference Player of the Year earlier today to Kate Cunningham. You see Joey Brackett's number one seed. Do you think that's going to hold? Do you think those four, including the two from the Big Ten Conference, are going to stay put? Oh, yes, I definitely do. I don't think there's any way they can fall off the ledge at this point. I mean, Illinois is just playing unbelievable right now. And, and, you know, I would assume we're coming back with the broken nose, the face mask, and getting 19 points in their win over the weekend. I mean, they, they are just clicking on all cylinders. Almonacy, no. I must say that Io DeSumo mask is the coolest mask I've ever seen on a basketball player. Oh, there's no doubt. My, the young Welsh in our house already wants one, and he doesn't have a broken nose. <laughs> Corey Allen. Gets into the scoring column after missing his first six shots. The senior from Ypsilanti, Michigan, draws Georgia State back to within three. Foul on the shot will send Justin Forrest to the strike. Forrest just pushes himself right through the door. The door doesn't have to be open. He's coming in. He's going to make things happen. And again, puts the hurt on the defender and the foul on Evan Johnson, just like he did the first half against Justin Roberts. Well, I'm sure you remember his dad, James Forrest's biggest shot among many at Georgia Tech. The 1992 NCAA tournament game-winning three against USC right over baby Jordan himself, Harold Miner. Of course, coached by the great Bobby Kremens. Yes. Forty-eight, forty-three. App State's largest lead was six early in the ball game at eleven to five. Georgia State's largest lead was seven late in the first half. We've had six lead changes, but neither team has been able to stretch it out beyond just a couple of possessions. Somehow, someway, they've got to space the floor and try to dribble drive into the gaps with spacing because this defense has been really good. You see the help. The help comes, and then it recovers, and then they rotate. Williams lost it on the way up. And the Mountaineers were the last to touch. So the Panthers will have it when we come back to Pensacola.
I'll tell you what, Michael Almonese is well on his way to an all-tournament team spot, and if App State pulls the upset, he'd be the most outstanding player, I would think. Six of his 22 points coming here in the second half, and Tim, he has not slowed down from the start. Well, he's only averaging about 12 points a game on the season, but you look at him, especially this weekend, he likes it here in Pensacola because he is a 20-point scorer this weekend. He is a guy that just is born to score, and you can see his comfort level. And it takes guys like him sometimes a little bit longer to get comfortable with the system, what the coach wants, when he can go, when he has to slow. But he has been dominant tonight and confident. So now just two points off of his career high. Three to shoot. They get a clean look from the corner, but can't cash in as Ryan Boyce, who is their leading scorer tonight, misses the three. Contact, no call. Allen missed the shot. Well, they do a good job, though, building the wall. Duhart was there. It looked like he was going to go for the block or maybe foul, but he backed away, just got protected with the long arms, contested, no foul. Their possession. If you're Coach Kearns and his staff, Tim, how do you implement that? Defend this well without fouling? Well, here's what they do. Dustin talked about it to us earlier today. He said you know, he went and visited different schools when he got the job, and he saw some schools just letting players just beat each other up. We're going to play hard, and there's a bang. <laughs> Everything's going right now for right for App State, but play defense. He has his assistant coaches referee practice, and they referee it airtight because he doesn't want them to play free and hard in practice and foul, and then they get into a game, and it's not realistic. So they call fouls in practice. You see, they just shy away from any contact inside, but they still contest and protect. Now with their largest lead in no hurry with ten and a half minutes remaining on the clock in the second half of the Sun Belt Championship. Kane Williams, tough runner, no. Duhart couldn't save it, and so the Panthers will keep it. Well, this, this is what you do in the playgrounds of Brentwood, New York. You just throw it up off the fan backboard and bank it in with a little touch. and Just great little crossover, the little pull-through step back. And so with that... He banks in his 23rd and 24th points. You see it ties his career high. Second time he's put that on Georgia State in the last few weeks. Foul on the floor as Kane Williams had the ball. And that's the seventh team foul against App State. And so Williams, who is a 66% foul shooter, will get a one and one When you look at someone's stats, we talked about their ability to pass the ball with Georgia State, their assist to turnover ratio, and that's a positive. But for App State, they've made, Doug, 24 more free throws than their opponents have attempted on the season. So getting to the bonus is a rarity against App State. Rob Lanier and Cliff Warren discussing things in our talk with Cliff Warren earlier today. He just raved about the head coach that Rob Lanier has become, the way he puts guys at ease, focuses on the here and now, not just game time, but all day long. And he instills in them, Tim, so much confidence. And we saw that in their semifinal win when they faced some adversity last night, and they're facing some real adversity here tonight. Well, the problem is, is coming back against this team. They're just so rock solid defensively. That time, Georgia State went to a zone to try to change things up, and App State did a great job. They spaced the floor. They got it into the middle, and then they cut from the weak side to get the open look. There's Cliff Warren, the all-time winningest head coach in Jacksonville history. Valuable piece of Coach Lanier's staff at Georgia State. How important is it when you're a head coach at this level or even at the highest levels to have that one guy who has been there and done that on the bench for you, Tim? Well, they have somebody that's sat in that seat. They understand what you're thinking, what you're feeling, and it can help divert a lot of the stuff that comes across your desk or comes across the floor on a day-to-day -day basis uh, with the players and understanding that that head coach needs constant support and also a guy that can tell him maybe, you know, 
you're not doing things the right way on occasion and, and somebody that you trust and that's what you need because that's that's invaluable and those two guys are great working together and you know, rob was a very good coach at sienna and you know then went back with rick barnes and there's no better guy in my mind to sit next to than rick barnes and Rob did a great job for him at Texas and Tennessee. Yeah, he was at Texas before he got the Siena job under Barnes and wound up working his way back after stops at Virginia and Florida. And all along the way, he could recruit. And he's gotten that opportunity once again, past his 50th birthday, another opportunity to be a Division I head coach. And he truly relishes it. Fight for the ball still. Finally secured by the Mountaineers. App State doing a good job of not allowing that second opportunity. And so Sime, again, just relentless trying to go for that offensive rebound. But App State builds a wall. They seal. They're great on the cutouts on the perimeter as well. Brown still with the dribble. Into the lane. Keeps his pivot. Two to shoot. Beat the buzzer. Pretty good possession if you're Appalachian State. Patience, patience, patience. They waited, waited, waited till Georgia State made a mistake. They kept their dribble, waited to the end of the clock, and found an opening. Adrian Delft now has 17 points to go along with the 24 for Michael Almonese. Here you see, they just keep their head up. They space the court. They cleared out a little space, and that was a good move by Xavier Brown as, as they were driving into the gap on the baseline. He cleared that space and gave his teammate an opportunity for a free lane to the rim. And so now Evan Johnson, a freshman out of Oak Hill Academy at the foul line. And he will get the bonus. And Johnson has scoring potential certainly. He averages seven a game coming off the bench, but he exploded for 28 points last weekend at South Alabama. The most by a Georgia State freshman since R.J. Hunter's 38 against Old Dominion nine years ago. A little full court pressure. Roblin here just trying to change the pace of this game. Maybe a couple turnovers, quick threes to get back in it. Eight minutes remaining in the Sun Belt Championship. Count the bucket and one. It is Michael Almonese's world tonight in Pensacola. Michael Almonese, head up, contact, driving right, shooting left, over the shot blocker, and a foul. App State, rolling. Championship with Tim Welch, I'm Doug Sherman, and uh, App State has now opened up its largest lead, and Dustin Kearns has an expression, Tim Welsh, that really seems to apply for what we've seen out of the Mountaineers tonight. Oh, there's no doubt. That's his theme this year. Embrace COVID or waste the season on COVID. So embrace the COVID season. Just listen. There's an excuse built in for every team, every player in the country, but he's not allowing it with his team. And you can see it tonight. They are embracing this season and not wasting it because they came to play four games in four days, rock solid defense, and then now a one man show on the offensive end with Almonese. We didn't know if we would get to March and if we did, how it would look in college basketball. And, uh, you know, coming into the season, I thought that the teams that are ready to play every single night, more so than in usual circumstances, were going to be best off. Bob Huggins told me back in November, the national champion may not be the best team, but the team that manages these circumstances the best. And in spite of COVID pauses this year, App State has gotten its act together at just the right time. Now up 61-49. Well, it's been their defense, but now it's their offense. And Georgia State is just allowing dribble penetration and no rotation or resistance at the rim. Roberts now has 11, draws the Panthers back to within 10. And they can get back in it very quickly, but they've got to tighten it up on this end and get some shots off the glass and go and run. But right now, they're just allowing layups. Long three-pointer. 
that makes it a 13-point lead off the fingertips of Justin Forrest. Under six remaining in the Sun Belt Championship. Number one seeds all around the country are having trouble tonight in their conference tournaments. In this one, it's Georgia State down 13 to Appalachian State. As the four seed, they are in control with under six minutes remaining. Nearly a travel. Allen, though, able to get the pass away. But it's another missed jumper. And now Appalachian State will work some clock and Tim as you've talked about the paint points are in favor of the Mountaineers 24-16 they have eight layups made compared to only three layups tonight made by Georgia State well App State's been very patient on the offensive end and they will not relent in transition they are sprinting back stopping the ball and then contesting at the rim Corey Allen draws the foul He's trying to get himself going by getting to the bucket. Only one of nine shooting. But he'll have a chance to shoot two free throws. This has been few and far between. An opening right down the middle of the floor. And this is what Corey Allen has to try to do. Is maybe force the issue a little bit. But against this set defense, it's very difficult. Because the second defender attacks you right as you get into the gap. Well, coming up in about 20 minutes. Over on ESPN, the start of the... West Coast Conference semifinals. Number one seed, number one ranked Gonzaga takes on St. Mary's, followed by BYU and Pepperdine, midnight Eastern, right here on ESPN2. You know, Mark Pope's done a great job at BYU in yeah. his second year. They would have been in the tournament last year, but should be this year as well. And it's hoping for a little rematch with the Zags. Or maybe not. <laughs> yeah, be careful what you wish for. Exactly. We have passed the five-minute mark now. Donovan Gregory hands it off. Three to shoot. It's good by Almanasi. 67-53. Well, you're Rob Lanier, he said, we can, what else can we do? We force a fadeaway three at the end of the shot clock. But this man, Michael Amonese, has just been lights out, unconscious. Put, me, uh, put the team on my back, please. Almonese is 6 of 9 from beyond the arc. 10 of 17 overall. 30 points as he continues to build on his career high. This is a man who was playing at Division II, Southern New Hampshire last year, who has come to life in Pensacola this week. Dustin said, Dustin Kearns said, that might have been a little deep, but okay, wait a minute. Pull it out now. Let's use a little <laughs> clock. Let's be smart. Up 14. Delph has it taken away by Roberts. Two on one. Roberts gives it up. Johnson lays it in. Well, Adrian Delft just relaxed a little bit, putting the ball right out in front of the defender, and Georgia State's going to get an offensive foul here. Timeout on the floor with 3.31 remaining. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by SoFi. Get your money right. Yeah, we'll be watching 9 o'clock on ESPN following the great SoCon final that's going on. The Zags are favored by 18.5 points, a chance to see real excellence in the West Coast Conference. We've got three and a half minutes remaining, 67-55. The number one seed, Georgia State, is in some real trouble. App State, two turnovers in a row, though. Let's see if we can make a three and get back in this. But, again, contested. 
one and done. Now App State's got to get themselves reorganized against this pressure. You mentioned earlier, Tim, hearing the Georgia State fans in attendance chanting defense. We just heard some of the folks who made the trip from Boone, North Carolina, having a little, fun, a little bit of fun as their Mountaineers are getting close to winning the Sun Belt. Just over three minutes to go. Ball will stay at this end with 16 on the shot clock. And there you go. That is a tremendous sight. Uh, the league, Sun Belt Conference, and City of Pensacola has done a really nice job this weekend with this men's and women's tournament. Utilizing two different facilities, the semis and the finals for the men at uh, the Pensacola Bay Center, where we are tonight. A quick whistle on a jump ball. Donovan Gregory thought he had possession, but instead it goes to the alternate possession. Well, Justin Forrest playing with that toughness that his dad did and had at Georgia Tech. You mentioned Bobby Cremens at Georgia Tech, but Bobby Cremens also was the head coach at App State. Now every time we're in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, another one of his stops, we're apt to see him at the Charleston Classic. Coach Kremens is part of the group that has brought that tournament there every year. That's in between golf rounds in Hilton Head. Though. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> That's true. Well deserving <laughs> after an unbelievable career at App State and Georgia Tech and College of Charleston. They've put three on the shot clock for App State. Out of bounds. That seems great defense. right from the start. Well, good defense by Georgia State. They had that play scouted. They like to run that little dribble handoff for Almonte. And this is a hard play to defend, but that time, Evan Johnson just got right up in the passing lane, forced a turnover. Evan Johnson, Justin Roberts in the backcourt. Along with Kane Williams. I like this a little zone just to kind of change it up late. Let Georgia State kind of look at this defense, maybe force some threes. Corey out from the middle of that zone, rattles one home, and it's back to a 10-point game. Uh, good job by Georgia State. Organizing, not forcing a three, getting the ball right in the middle. Allen got the ball right at the foul line, little mid-range. And at this point of the game, Tim, I've got to figure that's not a bad foul to give up. You're trying to turn them over and down 10 with 2.20 to go. That's not the worst thing in the world. Well, you've got to stay aggressive. There's no doubt about it. You can't get back on your heels. You've got to try to force the issue and see how App State reacts. And the pressure of this game, Bill, so far so good for App State. They look like they're calm under pressure, but if the clock winds down, teams will react differently. They still have only five team fouls, now six, allowing for the Panthers to be a little more aggressive on this possession. Well, we need a bucket. You go to Almonte, but we need somebody just to bust through the defense. <laughs> Justin Forrest just puts his head down and lowers those big shoulders and finds a way. I mean, he's so strong, but he's also very good with the ball. And that was not the sixth. That was the seventh. Our numbers were a little bit behind, so it is a one and one for Justin Forrest. Coming up on Selection Sunday at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN and the app. It's Bracketology. Reese, Jay Billis, Jay Will, Seth, and Dickie V will break down the brackets and have special guests. Sports Center starts it off at 5.15 as Reese and the guys reveal the NCAA men's field of 68 as the teams are announced. Well, we all missed the tournament so much a year ago, but the thing I missed second was the great arguments from these guys. Who should, who got in, who shouldn't have got in, and oh, let's go. Sunday night. There you see the uh, tickets punched so far. We're about to have another one here. The Panthers still fighting, though, back to a nine-point game. Well, they are fighting. They haven't lost their heart at all. Great body language. Continuing to pressure. Rob Lanier doing a nice job of rotating guys in defensively and finding a way. A little ball screen at the top. And first time in a while that Johnson got loose out on the perimeter. They went underneath the ball screen. 
He's got 14 points for the Panthers on five of six shooting. Under two minutes remaining. Foul. App State will have a one and one. So hard to knock Justin Forrest down to the ground, but that time he did a great job. Just saw a little air in between that trap, and they've got to seal this trap off. See, he closes it out. He throws a little bit of an elbow and clears the space, but they've got to hold their ground and try to draw the charge as he tries to sp split the double. The black and gold has its lead back to 10. It's been 21 years since Appalachian State went to the NCAA tournament. They've been only twice in their program's history. Evan Johnson uses the ball screen. That's a long two. From the corner, tough shot goes. Oh, beyond tough in the corner, and Kane Williams trying to force the issue. They need something to go, and they did against that tough defense. Kane Williams, a couple of years ago, was on the all tournament team at the Sun Belt Conference, trying to get there again. Kane Williams can do that. He doesn't need much space. And Donovan Gregory, that 6'5", kind of gets caught flat-footed. Doesn't think Williams is going to pull the trigger with him right up in his grill, but he does. So can Appalachian State continue to take care of the basketball? They've got 11 turnovers so far in the game. Georgia State has 10. But App State has been rock solid, especially here in the second half. It was a two-point Panthers lead at the intermission, 37-35. They led by as many as seven points in that first half. And there was actually one moment in that first half, Tim, where I thought it might start to get away from the Mountaineers, and they responded quickly, and they have never relented. Well, it's been their defense. And, it, you know, we all said it. You know, it's a cliche, but defense travels well. And you don't have to rely on your great shooting. You don't have to rely on... You know, fast-paced basketball. If you get back and play that solid defense night after night, you're going to be in most ball games, and it's carried them to this point so far. But they've got to be careful. They they're a little unorganized at times against this pressure, trying to dribble against the traps. They got to make sure they space the floor, look up the floor by way of the pass, and try to burn Georgia State on the backside for a layup against this pressure. By the way, love those jackets those two women are wearing for App State. Georgia State trying to give the foul, didn't get the whistle. They knock it away. Can they save it? They save it to the Mountaineers, and more time ticks away. That should have been a backcourt violation. They did not get it over the timeline in 20 or in 10 seconds. Well, I'm not sure if they call a change of possession, which they might have done. I'm not sure if Georgia, they call Georgia State with the possession on the steal when they threw the ball back in. And that's what Rob Lanier is arguing. But Pat Adams said, you guys retain, Georgia State retained possession of the basketball. You hear, see the pressure here. And this is what we were talking about before. And... Right. The, re the clock should should have been reset. The shot clock should have been reset after the steal by Georgia State. And then the turnover back to App State. So good job by the officials understanding that the clock should have been reset as App State has a player down on the floor. Well, I saw on that replay there was a random shoe at about midcourt. And I wonder if it has something to do with the injured player who we... Uh, so far, have yet to identify. Tim and I are calling the action 
from our respective homes. And so we're unable to get some of the hands-on observations that we are more accustomed to. And so we're just waiting along with you folks. Did I hear it's Justin Forrest? Indeed, it's Justin Forrest now on his back. Which is a great sign, but uh, he continues to struggle with that neck or upper back area. And we've got to look to show you what exactly occurred. He just was on the wrong end of a scramble for the basketball. And you see the heart of both teams just understanding what's at stake. And Justin Forrest gets caught, twisted in the wrong direction. But as you said, Doug, it's real good news that he walked off on his own. It didn't look like that was going to be the case, but great job by the trainers and medical staff checking in on him. And so while he receives treatment on the App State bench, Georgia State's Kane Williams at the free throw line shooting a pair. Now free up Almonese to be the ball handler against this pressure. Space the court. He does a good job of looking ahead and then spread the defense out. They're a little too tight right now. And here they throw the ball right into the trap in the corner. Traveling violation. Georgia State gets the ball back down by six. Yeah, I don't like what they're doing against this pressure. And give Georgia State tremendous credit. They force the ball to that coffin corner and... You cannot dribble through there. And Forrest forced his way through a double, and they allowed it. But that time, Almonese traveled, and Georgia State's pressure bothering App State. They've got to change up their press offense, space the court, try to beat it with the pass. And on the inbound, with that full court pressure, they brought Ryan Boyce to defend the inbound to help get the turnover, and they turn it into two more points from Williams. It's a four-point game with under a minute to go. And Georgia State right now, they are forcing their way to the rim, and App State backpedaling. They're not up on their toes. They're on their heels, almost like they're wishing and waiting for this game to end. They've got to attack this pressure and make Georgia State pay. Here you see them. They back up, just give him a layup. They have not done that the entire game. But Georgia State doing a good job with this pressure. They're switching up. They're organized. They're trapping the first pass, and they're cutting the middle with the backside defender. It's seven unanswered points over the last 38 seconds for Georgia State to get back in this ball game. And again, Appalachian State is playing right now without their injured senior point guard, Justin Forrest. Here, this is a close play, and I would think they take a look at that one. It's not cut and dry that that ball is off Georgia State. Yeah, I agree. Now, Pat Adams had a great angle. You see he's right there. Tough one to call as Justin Roberts gets his hand in there, but did Almonese sneak a finger in at the last moment? Now, if this is Appalach Appalachian State's ball, it's in a very difficult place to inbound down in that corner, and you cannot move. I think there's enough there. It looks like. Looks like Robert's hands just touched it. I'm not sure they're going to have enough on review to overturn this. So now App State's got to go to their playbook and find something down the floor. Send some deep, send some forwards down the floor and have their guards flash up to the ball. Right now, everybody's in the backward. They've got to space the court a little bit. So they stick with the call. Now let's see what the Mountaineers do against that Panthers pressure this time. 
App State has not had a field goal in going on four minutes. And from that weird angle, the inbound finally comes to Almonese. Oh, that he was goes an excellent play. Uh, he got Sorry, fouled Doug, before, no, he got fouled that was an before he went to the bucket. Dustin Kearns had, had the opportunity during that review to reorganize their press offense, and they had a little false motion away from the basketball. Watch Almonese kind of circles back and then has the presence of mind to push off a little bit and then cut and get open. <laughs> and that's what you have to do. You've got to get the, the ball to your best player and have him turn it away from the ball and then come back or set a screen for him or have him set a screen and then come flash back to the ball. 31 points now for Michael Almonese. State's got to figure out what they want to do defensively. They've got to get back and be aggressive in the half court because, excuse me, App State. Georgia State, you know what they're going to do. They're going to put their head down and try to get to the rim or if App State overhelps, they're going to drive and kick for a three. App State taking care of its business at the line in the second half. They're going to go and review this one to see whose basketball it will be. Doug Shouse called it off App State, but they are saying that this ball went off Kane Williams' leg. I think it did. It sure uh, looked like it. But are we 100% sure that it didn't graze Gregory on the way by? Well, that angle looks like it did. they're going to overturn this because Kane Williams that ball went right off his leg you see the way it flies off his knee that he deflected it hands in off the knee this should be App State's ball it's pretty clear to me too Okay, they didn't waste a lot of time. They tried to force the issue. App State made a good job, did a good job protecting, reaching in. Now they're on a dead spot again against this pressure. App State gets it in, and the foul immediately by Evan Johnson. App State's never been in the Sun Belt Championship game before. And they came to Pensacola having lost six of their last seven games. But Dustin Kern's club looking to cap off a fourth win in four nights and a chance to go to the NCAA tournament. Well, that was a good job again. They went back to their old reliable kind of a misdirection. It stacked everybody right at half court and then had some movement away from the ball. And then they got their guards coming back to the ball. And Sure, Georgia State has to foul immediately. Doug, they have the possession arrow. I mean, they could look for the tie-up if they have the opportunity. Donovan Gregory's first point of the night gives App State a seven-point lead. Well, without so Justin Forrest in the game, App State did a very good job of spacing the court and being strong with the basketball against that pressure. The big foul shots for the sophomore from Carmel Christian High School in Charlotte. Williams. No. Rebound. Duhart. And the foul. App State got back to their bread and butter. They didn't play back on their heels. They got back in a stance, and they protected the paint. They stopped the basketball, contested, cut out, rebound. And so Duhart, who got the rebound, Smartly, who's only a 50% foul shooter, handed it off quickly to Gregory, who has now made three in a row. 
That's a cool looking freshman at the line to go to the NCAA tournament. Nothing but net. Down 10. Do the Panthers have one last answer in them? Well, that's a pretty good start. The triple by Corey Allen. Foul on the inbound, and they'll walk the 94 feet to the other end of the floor for two more free throws. Well, Georgia State keeps putting the pressure on App State. They just drive it into the gap, and Amonese just kind of gets caught ball watching and forgets that he's guarding Allen. He's got to protect that line. And so we have our second foul out. Allen takes a seat along with Johnson. And so now Adrian Delph, an 83% foul shooter on the year, will shoot two. Well, what I like that App State's done here in the last couple minutes is they put a little ball pressure on Georgia State. They're not just letting them walk up the court and sitting back in their defense. They're putting that soft pressure on them to let them know we're still going to guard you. Delft now has 21 points to go with the 32 for Almonese. Forrest, sideline, he's got 15 points, the three and double figures for Appalachian State. They had a losing record in conference play this year and were a significant underdog in this game, and yet they have controlled the tempo and pace of play throughout much of this second half, and they enjoy a nine-point lead with just over 30 seconds remaining. And really, they don't have much size at all. R R.J. Duhart's at 6'9", but other than that, without James Lewis, who's a very good player, and kind of gives them about 8 and 5 and 23 minutes a game, now, they just play bigger than their size. They play such hard on defense. They give a lot of help. They rarely give up a straight line drive to the rim, and they've been one and done on the glass. They really do a good job of blocking out. Yeah, Lewis has only played a minute or two. He's been nursing a tender ankle, and they have gone with the lineup they have. Williams, no. And the Panthers will keep it. Good hustle by Ryan Boyce. One thing Georgia State has not put their head down and said we're defeated. They keep putting the pressure on App State. And with the ability to make threes like they have, they may have may not have enough time, but they're still doing a good job of not forcing the issue, waiting to find an open look. Foul on the three that gets called against Duhart. And so the door remains ajar. Well, that's a good job by Georgia State just running this little dribble handoff and the old kick your leg out. Hope that the referee buys it. Not sure this is a foul. Duhart didn't hold his ground though there, Doug. He kind of moved into the shooter at the last second. You just gotta you've gotta contest, but you can't be over aggressive. No doubt it's a fine line. And so Kane Williams calmly hits the first two. And if you're Dustin Kearns, you gotta say, wait, wait a minute now. We still want to play defense, so that's okay. I mean, it's not great that we fouled a three-point shooter, but we want to stay aggressive. We're not just going to give them layups and hope the clock runs out. And it's back to a two-possession game with 22 seconds on the clock. Can they get the ball in? They do. Immediate double team. And a foul is called. And Rob Lanier wanted the tie-up. It looked like they were going for the tie-up, which do here. They, it's their possession arrow. I think Although Kalik wrap, wrap around the neck. Yeah, Kalik Brooks is the foul. Just into the game, gives up the foul. Yeah, Boyce understood. I had him tied up cleanly, but he didn't understand his teammate was reaching around his head and neck.
Delft second is good. Rap State continues to put on token pressure. Panthers, tough shot. And a foul with 10.9 seconds to go. Well, that's just a tremendous job by App State. Dustin Kearns, I love that what he does defensively here. He just doesn't go back and sit and say, okay, let's hope the clock runs out. Good, hard pressure. Contest, look at the attack on the drive with hands straight up in the air. Built the wall, force the tough shot. Well, Tim, we asked at the start, would fatigue come into play? And it certainly has not. App State has fought through playing four games in four days, and they have not relented. And as you've pointed out repeatedly, it's been at the defensive end where we have seen them dig in. They're digging in against a terrific offensive team, too. Georgia State can score, but tonight is App State's night as they embrace the season. They didn't waste it. Appalachian State for just the third time in program history is going dancing. Champions of the Sun Belt Conference, they will hop on a charter flight from Pensacola to Indianapolis, and they are in the field of 68. Great job by App State. Congratulations to Georgia State on a terrific season, but App State... What a weekend in Pensacola. The two overtime games, then tonight, just defensive dominance, toughness, character, and too much. Michael Amonese. The dunk by Donovan Gregory, his only field goal of the night. He had four clutch free throws made in the final couple of minutes. And Appalachian State with a 17 and 11 record is in the field of 68. And that tells the story right there for the head coach Dustin Kearns. With his family, they are going dancing. Well, we spoke to him this morning. He was a little groggy after back-to-back -back overtime games, but he said, you know what? Our defense can carry us, and they did tonight, and they played a team game with a lot of toughness and beat a very good team. That's all from Pensacola. App State wins the Sun Belt Championship. So long from Pensacola. Welcome in.